I love Nerf guns, but this gun only fires one bullet at once and you have to manually reload in between shots. Even the electric ones only fire one at once, even though they take them out of a magazine. So I decided it'd be more fun if we could fire multiple darts at once, at least 10. So after various attempts at making air-powered guns out of various things, including drain plungers, air bazookas, and something else big that I tried to make, and none of those work very well, so I've decided we should do it with electric rollers, pushing multiple darts at the same time. So as you can see, I've made a pair of rollers on bearings and steel shaft, and hopefully they're gonna work just like a Nerf gun to take the Nerfs and shoot them all the way through. I'm not sure if this surface is quite right to grip them. We might have to make different rollers, and I'm not sure if the spacing is absolutely correct. I've also made this rack of Nerf darts. And we're gonna have multiple ones of those that get fed in 10 at a time. So let's put some motors on this and see if that works at all. So that partially seems to work, it flings through individual nerf darts, we had a problem where one is still stuck in my magazine thing here, that one's a bit tighter than the others actually, probably something to do with the 3D print. Um, I think they're slipping on the rollers because they're smooth and they don't seem to be going very far, so I'm going to come back and redesign these slightly and we'll have another go. I've increased each diameter by half a millimetre, which is a millimetre less gap in there, and now those nerf darts are really quite tight in there, I've still got smooth rollers, but we'll see how that works. So that seems pretty good. I'm currently just running two 280 kV motors, which are pretty slow actually. We could go much faster if we used other drone motors. But I'm using skateboard ESCs and two six cell LiPos at the moment. We could go to 12 cell on those. Um, or of course we could just get faster KV motors, but that seems pretty satisfactory so far. The next stage of this is some sort of auto loader, which is going to load in 10 nerf darts at a time. We're gonna have 50 in there. So this thing is going to rotate round and load in 10 at a time, and those of course slide in, so we've got this slider here, and that's going to be pushed by servos at the back that push in the cassette of Nerf darts. We should be to see them neatly poking through the rollers at the front, and getting expelled through this big mouth hole sort of thing I've got on here. I'm not sure if lots of barrels will work very well, or whether the Nerfs will get stuck, but they seem to go in a straight line anyway, so we'll probably just leave it like that. So we've got these sliders, which slide okay. I've put a bit of silicon grease in there, but that allows the nerfs to slide in and out. They seem to move pretty freely, and there's gonna be a servo either end, pushing them in any case to keep this level so that it doesn't skew and jam. And those, we've got five of them, are gonna be fitted onto these end plates. And of course, we've got 10 servos, five for each end, which are gonna fit inside those plates to push each carriage out. So here it is all together. Those seem to slide in and out pretty well. And I don't think those are going to stick, even if they skew. But we do have pairs of servos on each side to push those in and out evenly to make sure they don't jam. So I just need to wire all these servos in now, all 10 of them, and write some code to rotate them. We've only got about 25 millimeters of travel there. So a standard size servo horn is going to be fine with a lever to a little pivot in two places to the back of each of these. So each servo has a lever. There's two levers per magazine of Nerf darts. And if I press some buttons on this keyboard, we should be able to make those pop out. So now we just need to make this thing swivel round and shove the Nerf darts through this piece we made at the start of the video. So I've attached some rails here and we're gonna put a pivot on so that thing can swing down and we just need to control its position. So this is now mounted up in its frame and these things rotate around quite nicely and of course each one is perfectly aligned with the centre of my rollers to eject the nerfs when those cassettes get pushed forward. So all we need now is something to stop it basically in the right position each time and to unlock it and lock it and of course gravity will carry it down anyway in the right direction till we get to the last cassette. 
So I'm going to add a piece like this to the side of each of the orange cassette holders that's got a little knob on it, and then there's going to be a knob you turn which has got a notch in it. So what will happen is that will slide into there, and that will lock it. If you turn it round, it falls out the bottom. The next one will come in and rest on the top until you turn the knob up and down. It'll fall into the notch to exactly the right position until you turn it down, and then it'll fall out the bottom. And the next one will come along, and that means we can align these perfectly and lock them in place with the knob on the side. And of course when the handle's in this orientation, that actually locks everything in place. So on the first notch, it's prone to falling the wrong way. So we can lock it, or lock it in any position in fact. And that means it won't shake around all over the place if I run around with it. Right, I've put a handle on top so I can carry it around and shoot at things, but let's have a look at the rest of the electronics. On each side we now have the VESC ESC with the cables routed neatly, and the electronic wires going back to the controller. There's another one on the other side, and a 5 volt regulator which is there to power all of the servos. I've got an Arduino Mega at the back here, it's currently powered by a USB boost adapter, but I probably need a proper solution, perhaps taking 5 volts off the 5 volt regulator with a switch. I've installed a button on the top which fires each cassette in order, so that should be the first one, and then the next one, and then the next one, and so on. And I've also got a volume control here which actually spins the motors up, so I don't have to run them full speed, and I can decide how much force I want on those nerf darts. And the whole thing's powered from a 24 volt 6 cell LiPo on the handle here. Well, everything seems to be functional, but what happens if we pitch it against normal Nerf guns? Yes. Do you want a cup of tea or something? I'm just going to check my printer. Yeah, sure. Just make yourself a cup of tea. Okay. Um, right. Where are the Nerf guns? And we can't. <laughs> Random, okay. Another Nerf gun. Your jewels. What else have we got? Milk. Milk. Right Matt, now it's the Nerf challenge, so you have to shoot as many bottles off as quick as you can, and let's see who can do it the quickest. But I'm going pinpoint accuracy with Lawbringer and Noisy Cricket, and you're going carpet bombing mayhem. Yep, we'll see. I don't know how accurate I am though, you might, you might be more accurate. I'm I might be, miss all of them completely. I'm going to be much more accurate with this. It might take me a little while to home in with this one, but you know, yeah, it's going to take me a little while. I might be out of range. Yeah, it's <laughs> oh not a great God. one. This is ridiculous. One. <laughs> Just one. One out of how many bullets? Oh. I think you give me like the weakest Nerf gun. One. Three. <laughs> out now. I'm out right, now. Next right. gun. Noisy cricket. Here we go. Which is actually surprisingly good. But now completely different again. <clears throat> Uh, that counts as two. Count. Right, this is a better gun. The Nerf okay. Strike End Strike Elite Disruptor or something. Oh, yeah, that's you more go. Like that's what you should have started with. Oh, come on. Oh, well, now it's jammed. Gun jam. <clears throat> no, I need uh, more bullets or something. Zero accuracy. I think we just accept that a few of my foes got away. So what do you think of this? I think it's ridiculous, just like most of the things you build, yeah. but you know, then it wouldn't, wouldn't be James Bruton if it wasn't oh, ridiculous. 
So what you got? Fifty shots. Fifty shots, ten at once. Okay. So I have to be quite accurate. Do I need, do I need to start a timer? Three, two, one, go. Two, two down with ten bullets. Three more. All right, three more. Not bad. Four more. Oh man! No, you've run out. You're never going to do it. Oh, oh, is that the same? Well, that was, I got one less, but you did it in 20 seconds. <laughs> so, what we got? This is the. Uh, that's the loading knob that you turn and it drops down, lock, then up, and then, and then up. lock the next one. Yeah. That's locked. And right. the white button. Oh, and this is the volume. Yeah. Okay. Make sure they all start up. Right. Incoming! Locked. Oh, come oh, on. Than I did. Oh, come on. Oh, can I do it? So you've got 20 shots left, and only. Yes, yeah. come on. So you've got one, one lot left. This is it. One bottle. Yeah. yeah. How can you be better than me? I haven't practiced that much, in all fairness, so that's probably why. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that for working first time with no modifications. I guess we could go back and upgrade the motors to faster ones or give them a higher voltage so they go faster because the nerfs drop off a bit as you shoot too far. But apart from that, it works pretty well. Thanks to Matt for coming over. His eye was fine in the end. Don't forget to check his channel out for 3D printed giant Lego and his Dio build from Star Wars, which he's doing at the moment. All right, that's all for now.